Okay, hi, my name is um, Deirdre Duggan and I'm a PhD student from Queen's University in Belfast and today I'll be talking about how information from stakeholders and indicators can be integrated to inform decision making. Um, so it's now generally accepted that uh, stakeholders and their interests should be explicitly included in the, in the decision making process but with an ever increasing number of stakeholders um, this is a considerable challenge for management um, mainly because each stakeholder will have their own individual interests in fishing and its consequences and much of the time these would be in conflict. So when there is conflict, how do you implement a management response that is supported by the stakeholders? Um, um, it is also now generally accepted that indicators have become valuable tools to assess the present and possible future conditions of management systems, of fishery systems. Um, so indicators provide information on specific properties of the system and some might be providing a signal that everything is okay, some might be saying that something is wrong, whereas others might be um, a bit ambiguous. So similar to conflict among stakeholders, indicators also um, make conflict in the signals that they provide. Added to this then there is the um, uncertainty and assumptions associated in their calculations and oftentimes the, there's not a long enough time series to fully understand um, the indicator. Um, but both sides are now <coughs> pretty much required, well in, the, in what I'm looking at, um, to, as inputs to the decision making process. And um, throughout my PhD I'm looking at how this can be facilitated and I'm, for this talk I'll be illustrating a potential uh, decision support tool. So this is a basic overview of the tool. Um, you have multiple models from which you obtain various indicators and their reference values and then signal detection theory is applied to these indicators which I'll explain um, in detail in just a few minutes. Then you have the stakeholders and stakeholder analysis was conducted to identify their interests in different aspects of, uh, of fishing and based on their interests stakeholder clusters were created. And then you have a selection of response options that are fed into the decision support tool. So um, the tool then takes information from both sides and advises on which response would be most supported by each stakeholder and feeds information back uh, to the stakeholders then. So first of all, I'll go through signal detection theory. Um, you have an indicator and its reference point and if the indicator value is outside the reference point, um, a warning signal is considered to be on. If it's within the reference point, then the warning signal is off. Then based on the presence or absence of a warning signal, there is an advised management response. So if the warning signal is on, the advice would be to reduce fishing pressure, which is F uh, for this talk. And if the warning signal is off, then um, the advice, you don't need to reduce fishing pressure, so you can either keep it the same or increase it. And then um, I have two response choices here. So they're just pretty basic at the moment, just either the first one, either increase or maintain fishing pressure, and the second one, reduce fishing pressure. So based on um, the indicator signals and the response option, um, the outcome of implementing a potential management response can be categorized in as one of four outcomes. So a miss if the warning signal is on and management either increased or maintained fishing pressure, a hit minus if the warning signal is on and management reduced fishing pressure, a hit plus if the warning signal is off and management either increased or maintained fishing pressure, and a false alarm if the warning signal is off but management still reduced fishing pressure. And it is assumed for this that um, all stakeholders uh, want to avoid misses and false alarms and that it, um, implementing response options that result in either type of hit is the preferred option. So now I will look at how signal detection with indicators can be integrated with stakeholder information. So this circle on the right here is the basic uh, signal detection concept, if the warning signal on or off, the two options and then the four outcomes. And I'll go through this diagram now uh, in more detail. 
So the first two steps, you have uh, indicators and their reference points, and you determine then whether the warning signals are on or off for each indicator. And for this study, I have 21 indicators were, which were obtained from a previous um, part of my PhD, and they relate to both ecological and economic aspects of fishing activity in the Celtic Sea area. Um, however, instead of using the indicator data, which was not always available for every year, I created a binary matrix of all possible combinations of warning signals on or off across, across 21 indicators. So a warning signal on was given a 1 and a warning signal off was given a 0. And with 21 indicators, there are uh, just under 2.1 million possible combinations of warning signals on and off. Um, so that's the indicator matrix then they'll be using for the rest of this study. And then there are three objectives that I'm also using. So you have yield, ecosystem preservation, and socioeconomic. And each of the indicators were categorized uh, across these objectives, uh, depending on the information that they can provide. And it is possible that an indicator can occur in more than one objective. So 3A then. Um, categorizes or uh, yeah categorizes the presence or absence of a warning signal um, as one of uh, miss or hit plus uh, because an increase in fishing pressure was applied so each row now in the binary matrix is a series of misses and um, hit pluses um, 3b then applies the same except this time a decrease in fishing pressure was applied so each row in the binary matrix is now a series of false alarms and hit minuses <coughs> in step four then stakeholder specific templates are introduced and these um, are specific weighting systems um, that apply values to each of these outcomes and are specific to each stakeholder so to determine uh, specific stakeholder-specific templates, um, stakeholder interests were quantitatively determined from an evidence-based categorization of 90 stakeholders. And from this analysis, six stakeholder groups were identified, each of them having different interest levels in the three objectives. So you can see anthropocentric two is most interested in the socioeconomic objective, then yield, and then ecosystem preservation, whereas ecocentric two is most interested in the ecosystem preservation objective, then yield, and then socioeconomic. So these values then <coughs> are used to create the, stake the stakeholder templates, but because um, in categorizing the indicators into the objectives, an indicator could occur in more than one objective, this template, the templates must have a priority ordering to them because an indicator can't be weighted twice. So I'll use these two um, stakeholder groups uh, to illustrate this. So each entry in the binary matrix has now been categorized as one of four um, for outcomes depending on the management response. And so taking the anthropocentric two, their first priority is socioeconomic. So any indicators, indicators associated with that objective receive these weights, which are arranged to reflect this little table up here. So if an indicator has a miss, it gets a minus two, any hit gets a plus 2.1, and any false alarm gets a minus one. Then those indicators are removed from the second objective, which in this case is yield, um, if they occur in that objective. And then the remaining indicators receive these weights. Um, then th those indicators are removed from the third um, objective, should they occur in it, and the remaining indicators then receive these values. And then the same is done for the eccentric two, only this time there's a different priority order, so all ecosystem preservation indicators are weighted first, and they also have uh, slightly different values as well. So then aggregate alarm signals are calculated. So each indicator has been assigned either one of four options, depending on the response, and they have been given a numerical value that is specific to each stakeholder. So then the alarm signal is the sum of these values across all 21 indicators. So each stakeholder has two alarm signals, one for option one and one for option two, and that's for all 
um, entries in the binary matrix. So just under 2.1 million values. So with option one, the alarm signal will be positive if there's a high occurrence of hit pluses and negative if there's a high occurrence of misses. With option two, it will be positive if there's a high occurrence of hit minuses and negative if there's a high occurrence of false alarms. So regardless of the option, the more negative the aggregate alarm signal is, the less attractive it should be to management. And the less attractive it is for each stakeholder then. And uh, then finally, a stakeholder specific response support signal was calculated, which is the difference between the alarm signal for option one and two for each stakeholder. Um, so a negative response support signal implies that the stakeholder would support a decrease in fishing pressure and it's negative because there's a high number of misses with option one and hit minuses with option two. Um, a response support signal equal to zero implies that they have no preference um, for either response option and positive response support signals imply that the stakeholder would support an increase in fishing pressure. And it's positive because there's a high number of hit pluses with option one and false alarms with option two. Um, and then just to facilitate comparison across the six stakeholders, these values are rescaled to values between minus 100 and plus 100. So minus 100 is the strongest level of support for a decrease in fishing pressure, and plus 100 is the strongest level of support for an increase in fishing pressure. Um, and that was um, quite a brief description of that, so if anyone has any questions afterwards. Um, but and then I'll just briefly explain what these response support signals can be used for. So a response signal was calculated for each of the two million uh, rows for each of the six stakeholders. And these then were divided into three categories. So there's um, one category where all stakeholders would support an increase in fishing pressure, one category where all stakeholders would, would support a decrease in fishing pressure, and then another category where there was conflict uh, between which um, response option should be implemented. So here you have the response signal from minus 100 to 100, and the frequency with which a signal, a value occurs for each of the six stakeholder groups. And this is just for the um, conflict category. And um, when assessed in this way, these conflict categories, it was less than 10% of the total. And the range of values was between minus 4 and plus 12. So it might suggest that the level of conflict is not as extreme as previously thought, um, because that's out of a possible scale of minus 100 to 100. Um, and then I'm also looking at which indicators are um, contributing to these signals and um, how realistic the probability of each row in that matrix actually occurring. So the probability of each uh, indicator having a warning signal on or each indicator having a warning signal off across 21 would be quite low. Um, then, well, the other thing I'm looking at is um, agreement and conflict surfaces. So the state of each objective was calculated based on the indicators associated with that objective, which I won't describe here, but basically each objective can have a value between zero and one. Zero indicates uh, that that objective is in its worst possible state. One indicates that that objective is in its best possible state. And so this surface is kind of like um, a bubble, which is kind of hard to see here, but it's a big bubble. And these are all the combinations of objective states where indicators or stakeholders will support an increase in fishing pressure. And um, they will actually agree over quite a large area and not just when all um, objectives are in their best state. So down here in this spot, um, ecosystem preservation has a value of 0.6 and yield and socioeconomic are um, 0.5, yet all stakeholders are supporting a, an increase in fishing pressure. Then the same can be done for um, when all stakeholders supported a decrease in fishing pressure. Um, so again, it's more like a bubble, but it's just kind of hard to see in this, um, in this way. Yeah. Um, so again, the 
states range from zero to one, and this area is quite large, um, suggesting that um, the three objectives do not need to simultaneously be in their worst state for uh, stakeholders to ag agree on a decrease in fishing pressure. So up here, ecosystem preservation was about 0.3, and yield and socioeconomic were at about 0.7, yet all six stakeholders were supporting a decrease in fishing pressure. And then you have this conflict surface, which is somewhere in between the other two. And um, it seems to be mainly driven by a narrow range of ecosystem preservation values and a wide range of socioeconomic values. So I'm looking a bit more at this surface as well. Um, so I have briefly then just described how information from indicators and stakeholders can be integrated in this decision support tool and the outputs from that so there's the response support signal and agreement and conflict surfaces can be valuable tools for improving stakeholder conversation because they could highlight um, potential areas, large areas of agreement and small areas of conflict. And that in turn then will also help the, um, the management process. So there's the final acknowledgements and any questions.